Today's show is a very special conversation that we had with former child actor Jeanette McCurdy, who you know from hit Nickelodeon shows like iCarly and Sam and Cat, certainly shows I've watched with my daughter. But this is about her best-selling memoir. It's called I'm Glad My Mom Died, which is a humorous, bold approach about her complicated relationship with her mother. We originally shot this interview as a YouTube exclusive, but the response has been so incredible that we decided to bring it to broadcast and do the entire episode about it. Now, Jeanette's book has actually been on the bestseller list at number one for eight weeks in a row. So obviously our YouTube piece is not the only thing resonating with people. Her honesty, her bravery, her candor, but most importantly, the lessons that she's earned and learned are what is really resonating with people. So please welcome a conversation that has personally changed my life. Jeanette McCurdy. I was voracious and went after you like a crazy person wanting to have a conversation with you because mm -hmm. of the things I went through in my life and with my mom and growing up in this industry. Mm. First of all, this cover, I love you so much. <laughs> the humor, how did you get to the humor of this? Did you earn it? Have you always had a sense of humor? With, well, with the title specifically, I always knew that I wanted it to be called I'm Glad My Mom Died. I wanted something that would be really bold and attention grabbing and hopefully that people with a sense of humor would get, you know? Uh, and also I think anybody with who's experienced parental abuse understands and I, I didn't feel so concerned with, I knew there would be you know, some people who are like, I don't get that title, but I thought that'd be, that'd be totally fine. Um, and when people maybe don't get the, the comedy and the tone, yeah. how do they behave and what, how does it make you feel? Um, I try to stay off like Twitter, but uh, every interview that I've done so far, the, <laughs> the interviewer has been sure to let me know, hey, that title is very divisive. Um, and I think that anything worth saying is probably going to be Divisive. I think if it's not divisive, it probably there's probably no new conversation to be had there. So I, I felt it was an important and worthwhile title. Does someone have to die in order to be able for us to tell our truths? I think we at least have to write as if they have died, which is that old saying, right? Like write as if everyone you know is dead. Um, I've never heard that one before. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who said it, but I'm pretty sure it's it's like a I. I think it's a saying. I don't think I just coined it. I don't, I've never heard it before. I've definitely heard like, write as if no one's reading it or dance as if nobody's watching. I mean, that's the new mug being sold on shelves. <laughs> I'm actually asking honestly. Yeah. Do I have to wait to tell all my truths? I don't know if I can do it because certain hmm. people are alive. My thought on that is I think if saying the truth ends a relationship, I think it's probably a relationship that needed to end, I guess. Does that make sense? Like, Yeah, it, it does. It probably, there was probably some painful, uncomfortable truth that was just needing to be expressed for a long time. And if saying that out loud is going to end the relationship, I think it's probably better off not being in a person's life. How do you get over guilt and shame if they're still alive in order to tell those truths? Mm. Oh my God. Guilt and shame are tough. I really, I, I, I struggled to navigate guilt and shame for a long time. I would get them confused. And I, I was told by a therapist that I loved that um, guilt can sometimes be worthwhile because it can say, oh, maybe there's a correction to be made in like a life path or a lifestyle choice, but that shame is not really worthwhile, that it kind of keeps you stuck. Um, and can like spiral. So I would say the shame, the shame is, is, is I just don't think it's a, a, a valuable um, emotion really. But I do think with guilt, do you think it's warranted guilt or do you think it's unwarranted? I think when it comes to our moms, we want so badly to have this relationship that mm -hmm. I can't even say society says we're supposed to have. It is nature. Mm. It is nurture. It's evolution. I just have to say that you're 
amazing. I came in and I felt very sort of like I've been doing a lot of press and I was sort of in like press mode and kind of like saying the thing. And then just you sharing that. Thank you for sharing. And I felt like just an immediate connection and like the press walls kind of dropped. And then it was just like a human <laughs> moment. Oh I've been waiting to talk to you so much. I, I, I'm just oh my as God. much here to <laughs> ask advice. I, I relate to your journey so oh my much. God. I feel like I have a lot to learn from you. Oh, man. <laughs> I really do. I'm so glad you said that because I don't think of this as the same thing. I, I wanted, I just was like, can I please talk with her? I, I, one human being to another. Yes, that feeling is just, yeah, wow. And also, I knew I could trust you because you did have comedy in there. <laughs> when it's all so dark and heavy, I'm like, Ugh, I don't want anything to do with you. If you haven't found yes. comedy as a coping mechanism, we have nothing to talk about. It's so funny you say that. I feel like I can't take somebody seriously if they're too serious. Because I'm like, they don't, where's the humor? Like, there are shades to reality. It's never just dramatic. It's never just funny. It's always layered and messy and gunky and that's juicy, you know? I couldn't agree more. Because <laughs> as actors, you're like, like, put it all out there. You think you're so out there. But, like, <laughs> that dark stuff that's in there, I, it's real deep and buried. Yes. yes. So how did you start your therapy journey, and how did you start to unpack? Well, initially, when I, when I went to therapy, I did have my mom still on the pedestal. And every time, I felt defensive immediately when my ther first therapist, Laura, started asking questions about my mom. Immediately, I went into, well, she did this, but it's because she's such a good mom. It's because she wanted me to be successful. It's because she wanted me to have a better life. Like, everything had a... I, I was so defensive. I didn't even realize that I was at the time. But in retrospect, I see, oh, I was disclaiming every single thing that my mom did. Instead of just stating the reality or how I felt about it, it was... I was more concerned with how, I, how to keep my mom looking good than I was with expressing my true emotional reality. Okay, I think I'm having an aha moment. Tell me. Maybe it's protectiveness that I feel. Mmm. Mmm. Mm -hmm. I've never put it in those terms in my head. Wow, I got chills. It's like I don't want to paint her negatively. I don't want people to think of her negatively. Yes. But the truth is tough stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, it took me a long time to accept that my mom was not perfect, let alone abusive. Like, it, it went in baby steps. To, to put these pieces of the puzzle together and to recognize the reality of the pain that I'd suppressed for decades at that point. You know, I first went to therapy when I was 20, 22 or 23. What did your therapist do that made you feel like you could keep going?